searched a bit to find this picture, but it's the app you want to show you what's the elephant in the room, okay? Because it's, I'd be quite scared if I was this guy sitting over here. <laughs> Wage increases. Um, we all know it's the big elephant in the room. So this is from 2006 to 2016. Uh, average remuneration, this is all posts, including non-clinical, so I couldn't find a split between clinical or non-clinical. But in real terms, there's been a 55% increase in compensation rates over the space of 10 years. And that's the result over that period of average salary increases of CPR plus 4.5%. Okay, very substantial increases. Look, this is universal to the whole public sector, but... It's in fact, it's, it's interesting, it's still none of this illustrious to have a look at it here. Another massive elephant in the room, and this is virtually untouched in any discussions around, um, it certainly hasn't been brought up in the NHR policy process. Uh, it's certainly not, it's not mentioned anywhere other than for some footnotes in financial reports. It's almost as if it doesn't exist. But these are the numbers. Have a look at the growth over a space of, I think it's about six or seven years that we go through here, from 28 billion to 120 billion. Now, that was an astronomical number. I mean, this is half the public health budget in one. Like a medical malpractice lab claims don't get paid out in one year, but the number in itself is enormous. Okay, there's the number there. In this 21, 2022 year, the latest year, the department incurred 10 billion rand in new liabilities for medical malpractice and paid out 18, 8 billion in the year. So that's 18 billion out of a budget of 248 billion lost in one year. A very substantial amount of money. And the only reason this is happening is because of poor quality of care being delivered. Most of these claims are for cerebral palsy, which is immutable. You can't argue them. It's, you know, if a child has cerebral palsy, they have cerebral palsy. And the most common result is the birth, to, the delivery has not been done properly. You know, the mother wasn't monitored or corrected. So you can't hide these, you can't hide from these. <clears throat> um, I want to focus on what, what's possible in the Western Cape. And the only reason I focus on it because their performance is much better. And obviously, as we all know, they're not run by the ANC government. They're run by the DA. That's not a pun for the DA, but it's just to emphasize, I don't have another one I can go to as an example. So, but it's illustrative. Um, remembering that healthcare is a devolved uh, function, obviously, like, like education. So it's the province that runs it, not, not national government. Now, in terms of the way the provincial equitable share sp spreads a budget across all the provinces, um, it's done on an equitable basis. So every province has a roughly equal per capita budget based on its population. It gets allocated to be roughly the same. And the same with the personnel to population ratio. I went and had a look across the provinces they're all fairly okay. The Western Cape actually is slightly on the lower side than um, the others, but still in that sort of region. So the budget's the similar and the personnel's similar on a per capita basis. But yes, yet, so what we see, see is that their medical malpractice liability is 0.0005% of that 120 billion <laughs> that we looked at. It's, it's measured in a few hundred thousand rands, which is completely insignificant in the bigger picture. So they're able to have no medical malpractice liability, okay? Um, infant and mortality, maternal mortality rates are substantially lower in the Western Cape than any other province. In some cases, about half, other cases, about 60% 60, 60 of some of the better run other provinces. So the question then is, um, how are they able to achieve it within the same budget and with the same amount of personnel? That's the question that really needs to be to be asked. Um, some more gremlins creeping in here, but uh, Professor Mahobo, who's currently the health ombud, his tenure is about to come to an end, which is quite sad because he's been very good. Um, this is what he had to say on his own inspection of the provinces. So he did a national tour in which he went to all the provinces and went to have a look. Of the nine provinces, the only province that seemed to have its act together is Western Cape. Um, <clears throat> they seem to understand their mandate and want to serve the people of the Western Cape. I mean, there could not be a bigger indictment than that in terms of uh, the other provinces. And they really need to, the other provinces need to jack up their work. Quite a blunt statement. But anyway, that comes from our health ombud. Wasn't a punt for the DA, I promise. <laughs> Okay, number of fault posts, more recent years now. So I found some of the annual financial reports. So from 2019 to 2022, 
Number of filled posts, all provinces. Resources going down, resources going up. Okay, that's an average of 1.6 per annum. It's slightly more than our average population growth rate. So in real terms, resources are increasing. Um, number of full posts in Gauteng. The only reason I want to look at Gauteng is because it's been in the press a lot recently. Things like the Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital, in which there's all sorts of crises unfolding there. And every time you read an article on it, any spokesman from the Department of Health says, oh, it's because we don't have enough doctors, we don't have enough resources. But when we look at these numbers, I mean, this is what's happened in the last four years. Number of filled, po filled posts, not approved posts. These are actual people employed in the Gauteng Department of Health. That's an average of 5% per annum for the last four years. Um, that's way more than Gauteng's population is growing at per annum. Okay, so we are, but if, if, you can have more resources, it's always the case. If you don't manage them properly, then you're not going to get the outcome, the desired outcome. Um, even the budget over this four year period, Gauteng's budget has increased by 6% per annum. So its budget's improving, its number of staff employed is improving quite substantially. <clears throat> I hope this is not too depressing, everyone. Average compensation, all provinces. Okay, average of 3.6% per annum, not, not the, the heady days of uh, 10, 15 years ago, because obviously now finances are massively under pressure. But nonetheless, it's still going up. It's not, it's not going down. I mean, many, many people in the private sector through the pandemic lost their jobs. They didn't even get to keep their current salaries. They went to zero salary. Um, not so in the public sector. Okay, so... On the point of fiscal implications, I would suggest that um, we already are spending a lot. It's improving all the time. We should rather be looking at that than saying, do we need to tax the tax base, which is already diminishing and narrow more, uh, to raise an enormous amount of money that quite possibly may not be necessary.